Let's look at a more complicated case when entire row in the root table goes to zero. We have the characteristic equation here s to the power of 6 plus s to the power of 5 minus 2 times s to the power of 4 minus 3 times s cubed minus 7 times s squared minus 4s minus 4 equals 0. We write down the row for s to the power of 6. So this is the coefficient of s to the power of 6. Skip one power of s. This is the coefficient s to the power of 4. Skip one power of s. This is the coefficient s, s to the s squared. Skip one power of s. This is the, co the constant term here. Write down the row for s to the power of 5. This is the coefficient s to the power of 5. Skip one power of s. This is the coefficient of s cubed. Skip one power of s. This is the coefficient of s. And then a 0. So we write down the entries here. You know how to do that. So just to recall, this entry is uh, obtained by doing this 1 times minus 2 minus 1 times minus 3 divided by 1. This entry is gotten by 1 times minus 7 minus minus 4 times 1 divided by 1 and so on and so forth. Now when we get to s cube, we'll find that all elements in the row are 0. Uh, so this is this entry is 1 times minus 3 minus minus 3 times 1 divided by 1 which is 0 this 2 is 0 and this is 0 so how do we handle here we go ahead and form the auxiliary equation the auxiliary equation is formed from the row above the row that is 0 you, it is always the case that the 0 row will be formed at a odd power of s so you go to the even power of s just above this row that's s to the power of 4 so this is the coefficient of s to the power of 4 this is the coefficient of s to s to the power of 2 this is the constant of that's auxiliary equation then you differentiate the auxiliary equation with respect to s now what you do is take the coefficient of s cube put it in here and take the coefficient of s and put it in here and that's what we are doing and now you continue as if nothing happened get the row for s squared get the row for s to the power of 1 and get the row for s to the power of 0 so if we look how many sign changes there are in the first column in the root table we see just one sign change right here therefore there should be only one root in the right half plane the system is obviously unstable so what I did was I just went ahead and solved the equation this equation using MATLAB and these are the roots I get minus 1 plus or minus a uh, minus 1 by 2 plus or minus root 3i so this is stable because the real part is negative um, minus i plus i uh, this is these two roots complementary roots are marginally stable that's why we ended up with one row equal to zero this is a situation where uh, two roots are on the a complex pair is on the imaginary axis you get a uh, row is zero if you look at this root is a negative real root stable and but this one here too is a positive real root and that is unstable let's look at an example here uh, here we're looking at a unity feedback system with plant g of s equal to 1 divided by s plus 1 times s plus 2 a compensator d of s equal to k1 plus k2 divided by s uh, this is a pi com compensator or controller uh, k1 is the proportional gain k2 is the integral gain now we have to find the range of k1 and k2 such that the closed loop is system is stable the first thing we need to do for that is find the closed loop transfer function and from that to find the closed loop characteristic equation we draw the configuration of the system so this is the controller or compensator this is the plant this is the feedback loop this is the reference input here is the output the closed loop transfer function is given by uh, g subscript CLTF closed loop transfer function equal to dg divided by 1 plus dg. Therefore, the characteristic equation C of s equal to 1 plus dg equal to 0. We substitute values for d and g. 
cross multiply by the common denominator and we get the characteristic equation like so. Now we'll form the root table that's a characteristic equation. I have expanded the characteristic equation. Write down the terms for s cube. Uh, this is the coefficient of s cube. This is the coefficient of s. Write down the s squared row. This is the coefficient of s squared. This is the coefficient of s to the power of 0 and then a 0. The s to the power of 1 term. This is given by 3 times 2 plus k1 minus k2 times 1 divided by 3. This is of course 0. 3 times 0 minus 1 times 0 divided by 3. So this is a 0 here. Don't need to write it. Write down the s to the power of 0 row. There's only one element here. So this element is gotten by multiplying this term here times k2 minus 0 times 3 divided by this term which is k2. Now for stability there shouldn't be a sign change in the first column since the first element here is a positive element everything should be positive. So we write down the conditions so this term should be positive which means that 3k1 minus k2 plus 6 is greater than 0 and the second here this term should be positive k2 equal to greater to k2 is greater than 0. Now we need to find the region that is common to the, these two uh, constraints uh, which satisfy both constraints. So for that we first draw the line 3k1 minus k2 plus 6 equal to 0. So for that we have the k1 k2 axis k1 as the x-axis k2 as the y-axis we not to need to draw the line 3k1 minus k2 plus 6 equal to 0. We do that by intercept method. We set k1 equal to 0. Or try, let's uh, start with yeah, k1 equal to 0 and that will give me k2 is 6. That's one point through which the line passes. The next thing we do is set k2 equal to 0 and k1 equal to minus 2. And that's the second point that the line passes through. Draw the line. 3k1 minus k2 plus 6 equal to 0. Now we need to find out whether it's this region that satisfies that equation, that inequality or this region. To do that we find a point in either of these regions. So in this region I have 0, 0 here. I substitute 0, 0 in this equation is 3 3k1. So substitute for a 0, 3 times 0 minus 0 plus 6 which is greater than 0. So this point satisfies that constraint which means that this region will satisfy that constraint. So that's the region. Similarly for k2, we draw the line k2 equal to 0. This is k2 equal to 0, this horizontal line here. The region that satisfies this constraint is everything above. So that's that. The common area is that. So that solves the problem. To summarize, you should understand the concept of stability. When I say stability, this is bounded input, bounded output stability. What that means is if a system is stable, if you give it a bounded input, it will always give a bounded output. You should understand the conditions for stability. If you forget any everything, the thing that you should definitely remember is the system is unstable if the roots of the characteristic equation are the poles of the characteristic equation are in the right half plane. This can be just one pole in the right half plane. The system is unstable. Should be able to find uh, the stability of the system or determine the stability of the system by applying the Ruth criterion. And you should be able to handle special cases in the Ruth criterion. That is the first entry in the column going to zero and the entire row going to zero.